Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra. Here on my channel, I love farmhouse decor and I really love making something out of nothing. If that sounds like fun to you, I would love it if you could stick around and keep watching. In this episode of Timber Tuesday, I am going to recap five of my favorite and what I think are my best wood projects. Enjoy. Well, this is a DIY channel, so of course I'm not going to leave this frame the way it is. I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple of coats of my DIY chalk paint. I'm going to cut down this little cutting board. It's a bamboo one and you can find these at the Dollar Tree, but this is a thrift store find. Another sweet thrift store find were these blocks. These are like a tumbling tower game, but they're a little different. They have some print on them, which is instructions. I don't remember the name of the game because I threw out the box and just tossed these into a bin. But what I'm going to do is just give this frame a little bit of a wood accent down at the bottom. And I'm just going to glue these on with some hot glue. I'm going to use some hot glue to put on the little cutting board and create a shelf on this sign. I thought that was a really cute idea and something that I really haven't seen too much of. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the hot glue and then I've got my staple gun there. I'm going to add some staples to the wood blocks and the shelf from the back of the sign. Some of the staples kind of showed through a little bit on the top, so I'm going to use this tiny little square dowel and glue that in place just to camouflage it. Then I'll do the same thing on the bottom just to make it look more put together. I'm going to make this into a home sign, so I'm going to hot glue these wood letters that I got from a local craft supply store, and I'll have their link down in the description box. And then I'm going to make a cute little green wreath for the O. I've got to put some type of hanger on for the little wreath. I want this to be removable so whoever purchases it can change out the wreath for the seasons. I'm using these little jot push pins from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to push it through. I ended up having to use a little bit more pressure so I used a tiny little nail, hammered that through and then got it all the way to the back. I'm using this piece of garland which doesn't have any wire in it but is very flexible. I'm just trimming off those little pieces I don't need and then I'll glue it together to make a wreath form. As you can see here, I'm just trimming off the little ends of the branches because I don't need those. That's the part that sticks into the stem. Then I'm going to just use hot glue and I'm going to start gluing them around the little wreath form in one direction. I'm going to do one layer and then I'll fill it out and keep adding it until I get the fullness I want. If you are new to my channel, welcome and a great big welcome and thank you to all of my current subscribers who watch my videos faithfully. I love you guys. I'm going to add three of the little push pins to the bottom portion of the sign. That way someone can use it for keys or just to hang some decorative items. It'll be a useful project. Down in the right hand corner you can see my little mini wreath. I probably used about 25 of those little sprigs. Now I'm going to take a little chip brush and distress with some black. It's just a dry brushing technique. I'm going to go all along this way first and then I'm going to do some extra along the edges. I like to give the edges of the frames some more distressing so I'm just kind of taking my brush and flicking it right along the edge so it has more of an outline and you can really see the edges of the frame. I found the letters to be still just a little bit light even though I wanted to leave them the natural color so I'm taking some of this black paint and going around the edges like I did the frame. I don't have this portion videoed but I decided to take a really light stain just with some brown paint and water and give the letters a little bit of a darker look and then I added a little bit more of the black around the edges and I think that just made them pop a little bit more.
My first one is using these two acacia wood cutting boards that I picked up at my local Dollarama store. Dollarama is a dollar store that goes up to $4 here in Canada and I love all of their wood pieces. They always look really nice. So the only thing that I didn't like about these two boards is that there were a couple of lighter sections and that just wasn't going to work for what I was wanting to do. So I'm going to go ahead and sand them down and then use some of my gel stain to try and darken them up just a little bit. Now I'm going to take some of Rust-Oleum's Chiffon Cream Chalk Paint, which is sort of an off-white, almost a little bit of a vintage look to it, so I really love this color. I haven't used it a lot lately, so I thought I would give it a shot for this. I've just masked off about an inch and a half on either end, and I'm going to give this a couple of coats of paint just to make it look nice and solid. Now that they're dry, I'm just going to add a little loop for a twine hanger. It's really hard to explain what I did because I'm not even sure what I did. I just kind of wrapped it around a couple of times and then made a loop at the top and hot glued it at the back. And it seemed to work out just fine. So hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing, but any type of loop will work. If you've been with me for a while, you know that my most favorite thing to do right now is to print on tissue paper and add those to my projects. I found this hen on pixabay.com, which is linked down in my description box, and I went ahead and created this free printable. I will have this on my website. That link is also in my description box. You just put some Mod Podge on the bottom, put your tissue paper down, and then just use your brush with some Mod Podge on it again and make sure that it's all nicely transferred. You do get a few little bubbles and some wrinkles, but I like that vintage kind of old look, so I'm good with that. I did the same thing with the second image. I was so excited when I found this ticking stripe ribbon at Michael's. This one is the off-white with black. I've also got some moss green and some khaki, and I was over the moon that I was able to grab a bunch of these for my stash. So I'm just going to take one strip and make a somewhat of a border, just hot glue it on the back and I'll do the same thing for the top. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you didn't know, there's a little icon down in the right hand corner of the video and that lets you click on it, subscribe to my channel without actually leaving the video. I would love for you to do that. It really helps my channel grow. I love how these two signs turned out and they are definitely keepers. I'm going to be hanging them up in my kitchen. The first project I have for you today is using part of this wood bed frame. I cut a whole bunch of bed frames down into different size spindles and what I'm trying to do here is create a V cut in the center. I used my table saw uh, just to get some initial cuts. I'm trying to use this little hacksaw and I'm going to use some needle nose pliers to try and pick out those pieces of wood but I ended up going back out to my garage and using this multi-tool with all these accessories. I was able to cut in on an angle and that one got the job done. Now I'm using these two pieces of scrap wood cut into squares. The bottom one is a two by six and the top one is a two by four. I'm going to glue them together using weld bond glue. This glue is so amazing. It is like totally solid when you glue things together. This is my favorite glue to use. I use it instead of using a wood glue and then a crazy glue. This is an all purpose glue that will put anything together. I'm also adding just a little bit of hot glue so I can continue to work on this piece while the weld bond glue dries. This is another piece of spindle from the same bed. I'm going to do the same thing with it. Use some weld bond glue and some hot glue and then glue it down right into the center of the blocks.
This is a birdhouse that I got on clearance at Michael's. I'm going to glue that on top of the spindle. I need to balance this, so I'm taking a couple of these tumbling tower blocks on either side of the peak. I have the birdhouse sitting upside down, and this will help me get it in the center. I don't trust myself to be able to take the birdhouse and place it in the center on top of the spindle, so I'm going to do it the other way around. This is what the project looks like so far. I've had success gluing the birdhouse right on top of the spindle. Here's a really close up look at that V that I cut out of the wood. What I need to do is make sure that that can sit on top of the birdhouse. That's why I cut out the V. I'm making a double birdhouse topiary and I thought this would be a really cute idea to have on my front porch. So the same thing, I'm gonna take my weld bond glue and hot glue and then just center it as best I can. And I believe I used a little bamboo skewer just to make sure that it was going to be straight. The spindle is dry and I've already prepped it on top with some more weld bond glue and hot glue so I can stick on the second birdhouse. Now it's time to paint. I'm going to do the base of the birdhouse in white. I'm also going to do the birdhouse bodies in white. <laughs> Here you can see that the main body of the birdhouse is painted white. I did the small one as well. Now I'm just going to dry brush some white chalk paint over the brown spindle. I like the brown look, but for this I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I didn't want to sand anything down. I just wanted to give it more of an aged look. I'm going to paint the base of the birdhouse and the roof in Eucalyptus by Martha Stewart Vintage Chalk Paints. I got this on clearance at Michael's just after the holidays and I really love this color. The other color on the birdhouse above it is going to be Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in Serenity Blue and I'm going to do the base and the roof as well. <music> Of course, I have to also distress the base of this. So I'm using some dark walnut gel stain and I've just got it in a little bowl here and I'm using a dry brush method to just put on a little bit and then I'll add more if I feel it needs it. Then I decided that the gel stain was a little too brown. I'm trying to stay away from browns because I just painted the candlestick, which was brown, a different color. So I'm going ahead with some dark gray chalk paint over the white, and that just helps to make it look even more old and weathered. I also decided to take some of the gray and go over the white a little bit. It was looking a little too stark white on the candlestick, so I'm just going to add a little bit more dimension to that as well. Of course, since everything on this piece is distressed, I also had to distress the rooftops. I'm taking a small little chip brush with a little bit of white chalk paint and just dragging it from top to bottom, giving it a little bit of distressing. I am head over heels for this birdhouse topiary, and I hope you like it too. The next project I have is using these corks. I'm also going to be using some tumbling tower blocks, which are the medium sized ones, not the small ones that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to make somewhat of a crate slash log cabin slash box. I don't know, you'll have to tell me what you think it is at the end. But anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and glue some of the corks together to make a base. And then the next layer will be tumbling tower blocks. I'm putting the hot glue on the side of the tumbling tower blocks so they stand up a little taller and then they end up being about the same height as the corks. I'm going to start with another row of corks, then one more row of the blocks, and then I'm going to finish it off with another row of corks. Mm -hmm. 
I'm also using my miter shears to cut the corks. This is like butter. It's so easy to cut little pieces of cork to make sure that all of your pieces fit together well. So if you're interested in those miter shears, I have a link down. I decided to apply it with a paintbrush. I did have to shake the bottle a couple of times throughout the use, but I really love how the stain turned out. You can still see the lettering through the corks. You can see a little bit of the wood grain on the wood blocks. And I think it was a really good choice to stain it instead of paint it. I've got it sitting on a piece of cardboard and I'm just going to trace out the interior shape because I'm going to make up my own custom little cardboard box. I want to be able to leave the bottom open so if I want to put this on top of a different plant down the road I can do that. I wanted it to be fairly versatile. So what I'm doing now is just cutting out the square and I'm not going all the way through even though I am using my craft knife. I just kind of want to score it so I can bend it easier to hot glue it. Then I'll be cutting out the corners and that will make a really simple box. I'm just going to glue it together with some hot glue. I am totally in love with these Sola wood flowers. I'm going to take a bamboo skewer and I'm going to give each of them a stem. It's really easy just to poke that skewer down into the center of the flower and you've got a perfect stem for it. You can also then cut the bamboo skewer down to whatever size you need. Okay, so I've created my box and now I need to add some floral foam to it and check out this cool little cutter that I have. You got it. It's the straight edge from the Dollar Tree. It is a perfect floral foam cutting tool. It doesn't make a mess and it cuts through everything really, really nicely. I've pushed my box through and now I'm just taking my fingers underneath it and giving it a little bit more of a push to elevate it a little bit more. I don't want to have to do so much filler. So being able to just push that box up and down the way I want it is perfect. I'm going to start arranging my Sola wood flowers. I'll start with the two largest flowers. I'm also going to make them the tallest. And then I'm just going to start grouping the flowers a little bit farther down each time, working my way around and creating a nice mound of flowers. I've also got some of these greenery picks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut off those little fern like branches and add them into the arrangement. I've got one of the little green spiky ones way up at the top and then I'm just going to keep adding them in until I like the look of it. I don't want too much green but I just love this soft green color. It works so well with the wood flowers. My first project is using a windmill left over from a Dollar Tree sign, a couple of square dowels, and a cedar plank. The first thing I'm going to do is drill a couple of small holes at the bottom of each of the wood dowels. Next, I'm just going to trim down these wires. I don't need them quite that long, so I'm just going to use side cutters to just squeeze a couple of times, and then I'll be able to just bend the wire and it will snap. Using a little drop of hot glue, I'm going to be able to place the wires that I trimmed right inside the hole that I drilled, and that will make this nice and sturdy. I'm cutting down some of these bamboo sticks into angled pieces so I can glue them all the way up the windmill and make it look like it has the cross pieces on the stand. You can also use popsicle sticks for this, but I'm just using what I have on hand. Next, there were some pieces kind of sticking out a little bit and I wanted this to be really neat and professional and high end looking. So I'm just using my X-Acto knife to trim off any edges. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side of the dowels, making sure that I go in the opposite direction so it looks like there's an X pattern going all the way up the dowels. 
I'm using this little piercing tool that comes from the Dollar Tree in a pack of two to get rid of any excess hot glue. I used my table saw to cut two pieces of wood. I want to make a stand for the windmill. Now these cedar planks are really soft so you could definitely use a miter box and a handsaw if you have it. I just happen to have a table saw and it makes it so much easier for me. I'm using some Craft Smart gel stain in black. This is something I picked up at Michael's. It was on clearance for $5. I like the way it looks. It's not a pure black, but it just gives it a really nice rustic look. I'm using a paintbrush because I want to make sure I get in all of the little nooks and crannies. And then I'm going to use a small rag to wipe off the excess. I'm using the same stain on the planks. Once they're dry, I'm going to glue them together just with some hot glue. Hot glue works really well when you're doing wood to wood. The finish on these Dollar Tree windmills is okay, but I wanted it to have more texture. So I'm using a round chippy brush and I'm going to dry brush some texture on here just by pouncing up and down. I'm using home decor folk art chalk paint in the color Parisian gray. My goodness, that's a mouthful. I wanted to make the part that sticks out of the windmill. I think it's called a rudder, but I'm not sure. I've tried to look it up on the internet and can't seem to find anything to describe it. So I'm just using a piece of dowel and some little pieces cut out of a Dollar Tree cookie sheet. I'm gonna hot glue them all together and then just cut it out to the desired shape that I want. I also then just did a little bit of dark gray on it just to give it more of a galvanized look. I'm doing the same thing that I did with the light gray with the dark gray on the windmill, just again to give it a little bit more texture. I painted the dowel dark gray as well, and now I'm just going to hot glue it to the back of the windmill. I wanted the windmill to be very sturdy attached to the planks. So instead of just using glue, I'm taking some of these small little furniture tacks I think they're upholstery tacks and I'm going to just snip off the head with my wire cutters and then I'm going to use that as a little spike. I'm going to put it in the bottom of the wood dowels and then I'll make a hole in the cedar planks, push those through and then also use some hot glue to hold them all in place. If you're new to my channel, I'm so glad you're here. I do tons of farmhouse decor. You could probably say that I'm obsessed with the farmhouse look. I do thrift flips. I do tons of wood decors. That's why I created my Timber Tuesdays. And I also do a lot of dollar store DIYs, again, with a farmhouse look. So if that's something you're interested, I would love for you to stick around and hit that subscribe button. The second project I have for you, I think turned out amazing, but you'll have to let me know what you think. I'm taking two pieces of scrap wood and I've cut them in similar sizes, but of course one smaller than the other. So the first thing I'm going to do is just give them a coat of my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color Cocoa Bean. I was lucky enough to score a beautiful bed frame on the side of the road, which I took apart and I've got a whole bunch of different pieces and that's what I'm going to use to create the tiered tray that I'm working with right now. I'm going to just put these two pieces together. They're going to become the top spindle of the tiered tray. So I'm just going to hot glue those together and wood on wood with hot glue stands up really well. And then the other thing I'm going to do is glue a little half round wood bead to the top just to cover up the hole in this top piece. I gave the wood look area at the top of this piece a couple of coats of the cocoa bean chalk paint just so it would blend in a little bit more with the rest of it. 
I'm going to give both of these wood pieces two coats of a DIY chalk paint. It's just white flat latex house paint with some talc. And if you're interested in the recipe, I have it listed down in my description box. I usually mix up a big jug of it and then I'm set for quite a while before I have to make another batch. One thing I like to do is change the direction of my brush strokes on the second coat. That just helps to give me more even coverage. So I'll do a vertical stroke on the first one and then flip the board around and do another vertical stroke or a vertical and a horizontal stroke, however you want to call it. Just switch directions for your second coat and you'll get much better coverage that way. I've got four of these wood riser feet that are going to be the bottom of my tray and I'm just going to pre-drill a hole for the screw. I'm going to do that for all four pieces plus the middle section that's going to be the support for the top and the bottom. You'll want to have your drill bit a little bit smaller than the size of your screw because then it'll have some grip when you're screwing it in. Otherwise, it'll be too loose. I could have used a smaller one for this, so I did have to use a little bit of glue in a few spots to make sure that it would stay secure. To attach the riser feet, I'm going to be screwing from the top of the board all the way down through the board and then into the riser holes that I pre-drilled. So here I'm just marking out where I want them to be. I'm gonna mark about an inch in from the side and the top, and then I'll have them set in the same spot in all four corners. I'm using a piece of scrap wood underneath my board to make sure that I don't drill into my desk, but also it will let me know when I'm all the way through the wood. I'm going to screw the screws in almost all of the way. I just want a little bit sticking out of the bottom so I have an easier way of getting it in the right hole on the riser feet. Then I can just place the riser foot right into the little part of the screw that is sticking out and finish screwing them together. I should have added a little bit of wood glue to all of these pieces because I did have one that was a little bit loose. So I would suggest doing that add a little bit of wood glue or some type of glue. I am always using my weld bond glue and that will just give you an extra secure hold. I'm also sinking the screws in a little bit farther down so they're really into the wood good and they don't stick out too much. I flipped it over and now I'm starting from the bottom and putting a screw in through to the top because this will then support the middle spindle posts that I need for the tray. It's really easy to get these two pieces together because I've got the pre-drilled holes in the spindle. I'm going to repeat the process for the top level of the tray which is the smaller piece of wood I'm going to put a screw right through it and then attach it to the spindle using a screwdriver I'm just pulling away some of the paint on the very top level I'm going to just use my weld bond glue to glue the top spindle in place the glue will be sufficient because there isn't any support needed for this it's just a decorative piece Using some fine grit sandpaper, I'm just going to sand around the edges and the corners of all the boards just to pull off some of that white paint and show the brown underneath. That's the reason why I painted it brown. I wanted that reveal to have a blending effect with the spindles because I'm leaving the spindles their brown color as well. I wanted to camouflage the screws on the bottom shelf, so I'm taking some of these half round beads and I'm staining them with a dark walnut gel stain. I'm going to add the beads just using hot glue and placing them right on top of the screw to hide it. I'm going to do the same thing on the top. I am over the moon in love with this tiered tray and I think this one's definitely going to be a keeper. I hope you enjoyed my Timber Tuesday projects today and got some inspiration to start working with wood. 
If you like these projects, please give me a thumbs up. That really gets me noticed on YouTube and helps my channel grow. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and also click the bell to get notified every time I upload something new. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.